the Revolutionary War Park Center people, the Veterans Park people, this new horseless economy, the tourist, eco-friendly, sustainable development group. We know that that has been a goal, so why wouldn't this fella, this wonderful sportsman and philanthropist, be for something like this? The government claims a right, and then their claim is that they derive these rights from the people. Right. Well, how can people give a group rights that they don't themselves have? To steal so, from each other. Right. If we, yeah. if we can't yeah. tax people, like I can't tax you, yeah. where exactly does government derive this right from? It, it, and once you come to, you realize that the, the goal ought to be as voluntary a society as possible. Now, how exactly you achieve that, how far you can push that is debatable, but certainly that that should be the goal. That if government is providing a service for you, well then why does it need to be provided by force? All because of one screenshot, the headline of the Camden Chronicle and Independent. Above the fold, dead in its tracks, CTC owner may be repurposing property in the near future. Top of the fold, nothing to see here. Hello ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Kershaw County Liberty Report. The big hubbub of late is a story we broke last week about the Camden Training Center and how a proposed housing development that was leaked out to a number of people and showed a 720 housing unit subdivision. This shows you right here how it is professionally done. Well, the Camden Chronicle found, went to find out what was really going on. Some rumors have led Facebook followers to believe that a four, the 400 acre CTC property has been sold. Rumors on Facebook, y'all. And the owner is a Stuart Grant, and what he said is the Grant's answer that the query was simply, I still own it. He said to dispel any rumor as to the sale of the property. Apparently, that debunks the sale of the property, which we never mentioned anyway. I'm sure some people speculated that perhaps that property had been sold to a developer because of the first screenshot that went in. But they go on. Grant said he has considered what alternatives he has for the property while taking into account that it does not take away from the character of Camden. Any decision as to what becomes of the land are still months away from being determined, said the, now catch this, said the sportsman, an investor, and a philanthropist who has had a residence in the Camden for some 20 years. You see, he bought a, a horse some horses and uh, uh, he's a big time attorney and a hedge fund manager who plays in horses, you know, the dabbles in the horses. Well, when the horsing industry was still uh, running strong, he was one that came in and, and when the opportunity presented himself and he's got money laying out there, he bought this Camden Training Center and uh, bought a house here to come when the races come and when his horses are training or whenever he just wants to pop in. So it went on. 
Whether we like it or not, change is coming. We do not want to change the culture of Camden. The answer, the, the, the proposal, which hasn't been made yet, the decision, what he's going to do with the property, has not, will not be made for several months. Grant repeated and emphasized to keep the beauty and culture of Camden intact and that all options to be economic need to be economically viable and create smart growth in Camden will be considered. Where have you heard smart growth before? Sustainable development. Where have we heard that? Seems like that's some kind of some of that. Uh, World Economic Forum thing and the ESG. I wonder if he's tied up with any of the Black Rock, Vanguard, State Street. He's a hedge fund manager. I wonder if this has anything to do with economic social governance. ESG. Have you anybody heard anything about that? If you don't do anything, it will decay, Grant said of the land. We want to keep the city economically viable and keep the culture of Camden intact. Anybody think about the Revolutionary War Center and how they've been promoting this? Well, the culture has been horses, but horses are in decline. All of them, they're less and less horses. They even tell you about the decline in the horse industry from, and how most are moving from to New York and Florida and Camden's left behind. And over the when they did away with the Colonial Cup, you know, they had two races in Camden, Colonial and Carolina Cup, one in the spring and one in the fall. When they did away with the first one, one of the things I said then, I said, this is the end of the horsing in Camden, beginning of the end. And lo and behold, we're seeing it now. Horses are dead and tourism is going to take its place. And low paying jobs and smart development and you never know. They may start blocking off some streets and, you know, you got a park and, you you know, those would be walking places and all. You know, down there on Broad and DeKalb and all, maybe that's a center city and smart growth so everybody can walk around to the fancy steakhouses. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. But as to the horse racing, it says, more recently, the numbers game have not benefit facilities such as the Camden Training Center, which, which competed with other training centers in Florida and New York for clients. In 1990, the North American Thoroughbred registered foal crop was 44,000 and a little bit of change. But by 2022, it's dropped to 18,700. And they expect it to go on down. So your horse racing is done here in Camden. So they're going to move you to something else. Well, why in the world did the Camden Comical and the guy that wrote the thing is not a real, he's a sports editor. A sports editor. Okay. And he's going to and find out what's really going on, y'all. I mean, this is top of the fold. It's a non-story, they say. It's dead in its tracks, but it's top of the fold. They tell us there's nothing to see here. It's kind of like Sergeant Schultz. Oh, I see nothing. I was not here. I did not even get up. This morning. <laughs> but it's the headline story. And then Mr. Martin Kahn, editor in chief of the Camden Comical, 
has an opinion piece about what's going on around here. Quote, the Chronicle Independent is not a newspaper known for creating stories out of social media posts. Sometimes social media gives us ideas for stories and occasionally, as with Friday's in-depth report on the Camden Burials controversy, we may use social media posts and comments to shore up a story. But we really don't like to do so. You want your cake and eat it too, that kind of thing there, Martin? I mean, my goodness, my friend. You say you use it for ideas. You say you use it to, uh, you know, back up your stories and that kind of thing. He goes on. To be honest, we really didn't want to publish today's story. We didn't want to, but we felt it was necessary. There wasn't really a story to tell yet. Most people learned about the not, not yet a controversy. Now he's coining a new phrase here. Not yet a controversy through Facebook. An aerial, aerial photograph of the property, which it wasn't, it was a cartoon, overlaid with hundreds of future residential lots whose actual origins we have not yet been able to determine. In other words, they never asked where the hell did this cartoon come from? Who drew up the cartoon? I mean, really, boys and girls, is that not the first question? Where did this come from? Uh, Mr. Grant, look here. Uh, are, is one of the proposals this here thing, and did you do the car, have a cartoon drawn up? Is this from your group, from a group you hired? Where did this car, I mean, this didn't just come out the blue. But nowhere, nowhere did they even come close to, to doing this, to asking the questions. It goes on, at least one person suggested that the development would serve as sort of a backdoor, justifying transforming Woodward Park into a sports complex because the southern edge of the property abuts the park. And that is not what we said. Perhaps that is what some people said, but what we said is that the Woodard Park may be part of this overall plan that has been planned for a while. We know, we know that Woodard Park has been a wet dream of the CARES people, the Shaheen, but the Unholy Alliance the Revolutionary War Park Center people, the Veterans Park people, this new horseless economy, the tourist, eco-friendly, sustainable development group. We know that that has been a goal, so why wouldn't this fella, this wonderful sportsman and philanthropist, before something like this. And would it and he's already said he's looking at all possibilities, y'all. However, as we report today, the development of the property is only potential, not proposed. No one, including the owner, Stuart Grant, either Kershaw County or the city of Camden is checking out the possibilities in light of surveying sticks and whatever the ribbons and all. They're surveying the property. But the cartoon, uh, we don't know what uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Sergeant Schultz. I see nothing. <laughs> he is considering all possibilities, but a decision uh, from all those possibilities is several months away. In other words, we need to wait and see what 
he actually proposes at a, as opposed to what people think they know. In other words, we got to wait and everything, any leak that comes out, any what might be a proposed subdivision, uh, we, we, don't, we should not comment on, we should not ask any questions, any of that. But no, that's not how social media works. We assume the worst, bring it to life, and spread it around until everyone is mad about a proposal that doesn't even exist. It doesn't exist. But Martin, it does. See, what you've done is played a game where uh, you're, you're not saying that this is not a real proposal, I mean, I, I mean an idea which is being considered well, amongst many maybe, perhaps. But it was floated out, it was leaked out, and it could be a formal proposal. What you're doing is propagandizing. You're trying to obfuscate. You're trying to bullshit. You're not a real journalist. You're a damn mouthpiece. You're a puppet and a piece of shit. It goes on. Tomlinson, who commented at this at the uh, county council meeting last, uh, last week, Thompson didn't have a right to do so, my, had a right to say something, mind you. That is when as a, we as a newspaper have to, that's when we as a newspaper think we got to become involved in publishing a story about what someone hasn't done yet, y'all. Nothing's been done. They never get to the root. Where'd it come from? Nip it in the bud. That's what you do. Nip it in the bud. Now the minute it looks like there's going to be trouble, we got to nip it. Nip it in the bud. Nip it. Let's hear it. Nip it in the bud. That's right, Barney. You got to nip it in the bud. If you see something like, we're not supposed to question anything. He goes on to call the leak the cartoon, as I call it, the rendering, the piece of paper, a dubious information on social media in such a way as to inflame an entire community. You know what inflamed an entire community? The idea of putting 720 houses in that piece of property. It wasn't the people that leaked it. It wasn't the people that are saying, look here. It's the idea that there, that there might be this subdivision from some billionaire who don't give a shit in reality about Camden. He was only here for the horses anyway. The only reason he's sucking up to these other uh, unholy alliance and all is to get his damn way and then ride on down into the sunset on his little thoroughbreds. Now, he goes on at the end. We don't know how to stop it. We don't know how to stop this misinformation on social media. This free speech has got to stop, y'all. But this sort of thing really needs to end. We simply must find ways to be patient, wait for facts, and then consider them carefully before posting or commenting on social media and causing an unnecessary ruckus. Let me tell y'all something. If we knew the backdoor deals going on for the Revolutionary War Park, the Veterans Park, the piece of property way up at Liberty Hill, or any of these, uh, the, the Woodard Park backroom deals, the Fee and Lou backroom deals, if we knew ahead of time, we could organize a little bit just like this. This leak 
is going to stifle any kind of plans for any kind of 720 house subdivision. The people will get out the pitchforks and torches at this point. And they know that. That's why this is on the front page. This is why it's on the front page. He goes on. Never fear. Never fear, boys and girls. We will publish the story of whatever Grant proposes whenever he actually proposes it. That will be news. That's what we do. The Camden Comical, y'all, does news. I call bullshit. Check this out. Camden Fats location closes in, in company bankruptcy. Above the fold, they talk about a damn restaurant closing. And ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to see what kind of bull crap they got in here. Look at the ads and, the, and just the church directories and, and stupid little... Look at the sports. Sports covers two pages. Look at this great big full page ad. There's nothing in this paper. It's a waste of 75 cents. Look at the back. Big old ad and all. Big old photograph. No, nothing but... This is the way that they get things past you. Unless people speak up, unless government officials leak it out, they're like Sergeant Schultz. I know nothing. Oh, I see nothing. I was not here. I did not even get up this morning. <laughs> but that's the headline story. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't get involved and you don't say anything, if you don't call these fellas, you get run over. You've seen it for decades and decades and decades. This unholy alliance working behind the scenes to mold, shape all of our lives. And it's always for the greater good, for back scratching, influence, power and money. That's it for the Kershaw County Liberty Report. Hope y'all tune in next week. Leave a comment below. Hit the like button and subscribe. Till next time. Peace. The government claims a right and then their claim is that they derive these rights from the people. Right. Well, how can people give a group rights that they don't themselves have? To steal from so, each other. Right, if we, yeah. if we can't yeah. tax people, like I can't tax you, yeah. where exactly does government derive this right from? It, it, and once you come to, you realize that the, the goal ought to be as voluntary a society as possible. Now, how exactly you achieve that, how far you can push that is debatable, but certainly that that should be the goal. That if government is providing a service for you, well then why does it need to be provided by force?